Hey guys, it's G from papercraftingbyg.com and I'm here today with a tutorial on how to make a fun background for your cards using acrylic craft paint. The card I'm sharing with you today features one of my favorite color combinations, but the options are endless. This technique results in a very abstract background, but you can use stencils or painter's tape to create something more uniform. Okay, so to begin, I'm going to show you how I create my painted backgrounds without any mess on my workspace. For this, you're going to need a piece of foam core, paper towels, cling wrap, and masking tape. I'm first going to take my piece of foam core and put a large paper towel on top of it. The paper towel ensures that cleanup will be mess free, but we'll get to that later. Now I'm taking a piece of cling wrap and I'm going to cover the foam core and paper towel with it. This is where the paint is going to go, so it's important to be a large enough area to work on. Once it's placed where I want it, I'm going to tape down the four sides with masking tape so it doesn't shift when I'm working. Now we're ready to begin painting. I am using acrylic craft paint and for this technique I like to pick two neutral colors and a bright color. I am using my favorite color combination of white, light gray, and bright turquoise. What's so much fun about this technique is that no brushes or water is necessary, so no artistic skill or expensive materials are needed to create a cool background. I'm going to take each tube of paint and directly pour it onto the cling wrap. I would try to avoid pouring the paint into a bunch of big globs and instead pour it into some thin, curvy lines. Now that all the paint is down, I'm going to take a scrap piece of transparency and spread some of the paint around. An old gift card or a thick piece of cardstock would work well for this too. I'm not trying to mix the colors too much, but I'm trying to blend them together a little bit. For my paper, I'm going to be using a 4.5 by 6 inch sheet of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. All I'm doing is placing it face down in the paint and picking it back up. Each time I do this, I check to see which places need more paint so I can concentrate pressure in that area next time. I do this over and over again until my paper is painted just how I want it. For this card, I'm going to need two painted pieces of paper. One will be for the background and one will be used to die cut my sentiment. There should be enough paint down to make at least three backgrounds, but you can add more of one color or more of the colors if you think it's necessary. If the paint seems thick in spots, it may increase the paper's drying time or even warp the paper. I like to press these thick spots into pieces of the cling wrap that have no paint on them to blot them off some. Once you're done creating your backgrounds, you can lay them out on a paper towel or a sheet of newspaper to dry. They do need to dry overnight, so this is really a two-day project, especially if you're making more than one card. Cleaning up the paint is so easy thanks to all the setting up I did. All I'm going to do is peel up the masking tape and fold the messy cling wrap into the center of the board. Because the cling wrap can get paint everywhere, I use the paper towel I placed underneath it to roll it up kind of like a burrito so that I can throw it away without having to worry about wet paint getting everywhere. So my backgrounds have dried overnight and now I'm ready to make my card. I'm going to be making a birthday card today, but I think you can make this card work for multiple occasions. For my card base, I'm going to be using a piece of light gray cardstock. It has been cut down already, so all I need to do is score it with my Martha Stewart mini scoreboard. Before I adhere my background to my card base, I'm going to round the corners of both the base and the background with my We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper. I'm using the quarter inch size rounder for this card. Once that has been completed, I'm going to adhere the background to the card using my ATG Adhesive by Scotch.
So next I'm going to be making a cardstock and vellum strip to run across the center of my background. I'm using the same light gray cardstock that I used for the base and a strip of translucent vellum for this. I'm going to cut the strips so that they both end where the sides of the background ends, but the vellum strip is going to be slightly wider than the cardstock. While the vellum isn't extremely noticeable, it still adds some great texture to the card. It's one of those little touches that make a big difference. I have yet to find a good vellum adhesive, so I'm going to be adhering the strip by running my adhesive down the center of the strip so that the gray cardstock will cover it. I'm going to put my card to the side for a moment and work on the sentiment. I'm going to be using this cute Happy Birthday die from Simon Says Stamp on the second piece of painted paper I made. I'm positioning the die so that it cuts into the different colors of the paint. I don't want the color to be uniform across the die cut because I want it to match the abstract background. I'm running it through my Big Shot machine to create the die cut. Depending on how much paint you use, it may be a good idea to run it through your die cut machine twice. Once I've run it through, I'm going to be using my die pick to separate the words from the rest of the paper. Now that I have my sentiment ready, I'm going to return to work on the card. I really think that smaller touches add so much value to the card, so I'm going to take my white gel pen and add faux stitching between the edge of the base and the perimeter of the background. This is such a great finishing touch on most cards, but I'm using it today because it matches the ribbon I will be using later in the tutorial. I like my cards to look finished, so I like to add faux stitching to the back of the card as well. This is certainly optional, but I think it does make the card look nicer. Now I'm ready to add some fun ribbon. I am using this gray and white stitch ribbon that I found at Hobby Lobby to tie a cute bow on the card. I'm going to tie it so that the ribbon runs across the bottom portion of the cardstock and vellum strip. I'm making sure to position the ribbon so that you can still see some of the cardstock and the vellum underneath it. I don't want the ribbon to shift, so I'm going to use a drop of liquid adhesive behind the back of the bow to hold it in place. Once my bow has been tied, I'm ready to add my sentiment. Now, there are products that allow you to add a thin sheet of adhesive to the back of your paper for intricate die cuts, but since I don't have any on hand, I'm going to carefully adhere the sentiment with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue. I'm going to put a drop of glue on a scratch piece of paper and use my die pick to add some of the tiny dots of glue to the back of the die cuts. This can be tedious, so I definitely recommend using the adhesive sheets if you have them. After the sentiment has been added to the card, it's finished. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and will be inspired to make your own painted backgrounds. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you would like to see more, subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit me at my website at www.papercraftingbyg.com.